Hi everybody, Deb Tucker here from Studio 180 Design. We're going to talk in this video today about one of our fundamental tools that we call the corner beam. Now the corner beam tool is going to create basic units that are squares. The squares have two seams in them. The seams go from the corner to the center, from the corner to the center, which is why the tool got the name corner beam. It looks like a beam of light coming out of the corner. What you may notice is that the corner beam tool and the V-block tool have the same angle at the edges. And one of the reasons it has the same angle is that the side triangles on the corner beam, the side triangle there, and the side triangle on the V-block have the same angle, which is why the tools have the same angle. They go from corner to center on both, but they create units that are very different. The tools you'll notice also have icons on them that easily identify which tool is for which unit. So today we're going to talk about the corner beam. When we uh, do the corner beam unit, the first decision of course was the size that we need to make. You'll go to the information section of the tool for the, what you need to do. If I'm making a three inch finished unit, that information will tell me what I need to cut. It says I need to cut strips and I need to cut squares that are four inches. Now I'll use squares when I'm cutting the center beam and I'm going to use strips when I'm cutting those side triangles. Let's talk about them one at a time. I, for the unit that I'm making on the table, those center beams are made from four inch squares. On the tool, there are two dash lines that you need to pay attention to when you're cutting that center beam. There's a simple dash line going north and south. And it says right on it, center beam trim number one. There's another angled dash line. It's dashed in dots, but it says right on it, center beam trim number two. Those are the only two lines that you need to look at when you are cutting that center beam. I've got my four inch square that I was instructed to cut to cut that center beam, and you can cut as many layers as you feel comfortable cutting through, but I'm going to put that first center beam trim number one guideline against the edge of my squares, make my cut, that's going to give me the first edge of my center beam. To get the next edge of the center beam, simply take your ruler, I do a little rotation from the tip, and line up that dashed and dotted line with the edge that I just cut. That's the line that says center beam trim number two. Line that up with what you've just cut, make your next angled cut, and what you have is that center beam section that's exact, well it's got exactly the right angle, but it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be. That's because I'm going to piece my units slightly bigger and then trim them down to size. You'll notice also that we have two little cutaway triangles. I'm going to put those off to the side and we'll come back and talk about those later in the video. Now, to create the side triangles, I'm going to use my four inch strips. That four inch strip needs to be placed either right side together or wrong side together because my unit has mirror, those side triangles are mirror images of each other. So the strip is placed, in my case, wrong side together. I've cleaned up the edge. On the tool, what I'm going to look at is a single broad heavy line that's labeled side triangle trim number one. That's the line that I'm going to position against the raw edges of my strip, make my angled cut, and you can see what I'm going to get once I make that first cut are side triangles slightly bigger than they need to be. To get the next pair of side triangles out of the strip, I just cut along the angled edge. I'm going to pick up my corner beam tool, rotate it, and start looking for a couple of other placement guidelines. I'm going to put my second trim line at the base of the strip, and I'm going to look at the angled line here that shares a job. It's a seam placement line, but it's also side triangle number two guideline. Line that right up with what I've just cut, cut again, and I will have my next pair of side triangles for my corner beam unit. Now, right-handers, you'll put your strip horizontal on your mat when you are trimming. If you happen to be, my strip's pretty short right now, but if you happen to be left-handed, simply rotate your strip so that it's going vertical on your mat. You'll be able to line up that same broad line on the edge of your strip, use your cutter, and cut across in a comfortable manner. All those instructions are covered step by step in the instructions that come along with your tool. 
And when you're done, what you're going to end up with are bunches of center beams and bunches of side triangles. I always take those pieces and lay them out exactly how I want them to look before I start to sew. Because it's very easy to take those pieces and end up putting them on there so they're not making a square. They're making, well, it kind of looks like a wingy thing. I don't know. But I, I, that's not what I want. I, well, I know what I want is something that when I, everything is sewn is going to end up giving me a square. When I do my stitching, I like to do my stitching from the broad end toward the point. So for my first round of stitching, I would stack up all of my center beams. I'd stack up my side triangles, flip them over so that they're raw edges, let's get the other one out from underneath there, so that the raw edges are even, and I chain piece those, one behind the other, behind the other, from the broad end toward the pointy end, take the whole piece chain to my ironing board, I like to press my seams going toward the side triangles, that way it keeps it away from that pointy section there, once I've stitched and pressed the first side triangle into place. I'm going to position the next side triangle, raw edge. The nice thing about the, the having the side pieces and having the center pieces cut slightly oversized is you don't have to do a lot of precision placement. All you have to do is line up those raw edges when you're stitching. Stitch them quickly, take them through the ironing board, give them another press. You are going to end up with corner beam units and they may not always look very pretty. They might have a bit of fabric hanging over here. They may not be lined up here but that's all okay because the next thing and the last thing that we're going to do is use the seam placement guidelines on our ruler and trim them down to size. Now you will always trim the pointy end first if you happen to be left-handed. Put that pointy end in the upper left hand corner and you'll be able to take and comfortably place those seam placement guidelines on the seam, trim up the left and across the top and if you're right handed, rotate the block so that the pointy end is in the upper right hand corner, position and line up those seam placement guidelines on the ruler, there's two of them, with the seams that you've sewn, clean up the corner, it's going to now be nice and square all the riffraff and all the unevenness is gone, rotate the unit around, line up your cleanup guidelines. I'm making a three inch block so I'm trimming this to three and a half by three and a half. Those are the guidelines that are lining up on the edges so that when I trim and when I trim I am going to have a perfect square that has the seams going exactly where I want them to go so that if I put them together with any other corner beam unit they're going to all meet and they're all going to match. That's the fun thing about making these fundamental units oversized and trimming them down. Now I did say at the beginning of this that I was going to talk about those cutaway triangles. Remember when we cut that center beam, we had a couple of triangles that we cut away when we cut that center beam. You can take these side triangles layer them together. Now you do have really actually have a couple options. If you don't want to do anything with them, you can just throw them away if you want to. Or you can give them away. But if you'd like, you can actually use them. You can take those side triangles, layer them one on top of the other, take your same corner beam tool, use that broad line up against the edge, and you can trim those cutaway triangles down to make additional side triangles, you can use them to create smaller corner beam units. You can use those side triangles to create smaller V block units because remember at the beginning we talked about those side triangles being the same. Or you can take those side triangles and team them up with additional side triangles and make smaller what we call split rex units and trim those down to size as well. So Think about adding the corner beam tool to your bag of tricks. It's going to allow you to make some fun blocks, uh, some that might be 
pretty easy. This is an example of a block that uses nothing but that corner beam unit, but that corner beam unit can also be teamed up with other traditional units. We have four of those corner beam units in the corners. We have the hourglass units here that make our traditional Ohio star block and a square squared uh, block in the center or unit in the center. And you can also use that corner beam to create the tips of those leaves that we like to make so much. The quilt that you see behind me is actually one of the patterns that we have written for this tool. It's called North Star. This is a nice example of using the cutaways. All of these smaller or the medium size corner beam units, the cutaways were used when I created the smaller stars that go around the outside edge. So think about putting the corner beam into your toolbox. If you, you can find it at your local quilt shop and if you can't find it there, come visit our web store. You can pick one up directly from us. And while you're there, you might wanna think about watching some of the other videos that we have on some of our other tools and signing up for our newsletter. Thanks and enjoy.